Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, in today's video, I am going to be doing another movie screen cap study, this time from one of my all-time favorite films, Batman Returns. I will mainly be using Daniel Smith watercolors with a touch of mixed media, and as always, all the art supplies I use in today's video will be listed in the description. But before we dive into the process, I quickly wanted to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. As an illustrator and content creator, I love being able to showcase my varied works all in one place. Being the type of artist that I am, social media and having a good online presence is really important. These days, people are viewing online content not only on their computer, but on their mobile and tablets as well. And what's great about the Squarespace website builder is that it automatically adjusts your design to suit multiple devices and you can easily view it while you're editing. It's incredibly intuitive to use and makes adjusting your website really streamlined and overall just looks really professional. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now onto the painting process. As per usual, I have used color pencils for the sketch before I been, begin painting. And the first screen cap here that I picked is this shot of outside Selena's apartment looking into her window right after she essentially becomes Catwoman. Since this screen cap has a fairly limited color palette of blues, purples, and magentas, I decided it would make more sense for me to just use individual tubes of watercolor instead of using a pre-made palette, since initially I was kind of debating between using maybe my Paul Rubens watercolor palette or the Kurotake uh, Gansai Tambi, but then when I realized that this screenshot is, you know, a verily a very limited color palette, I would realize I didn't really need to bust out any of those sets that have like 12 to 24 colors. And something that I like to do when I'm painting is to mix many of my colors in advance so that I can easily switch back and forth between them during the painting process. This is especially useful when you want to create soft gradients and color shifts. And as you would have seen as well, I often wet the paper surface first with clean water so that I'm painting wet on wet, which also helps aid in creating soft blending and a fairly even wash. For those of you who are familiar with my watercolor process, you'll know that I am a big proponent of using many layers of paint to slowly build up the saturation and values. My main piece of advice when you do this with watercolors is that you need to wait for the surface to dry before you add another layer on top of it. Otherwise, you'll disturb it, uh, you'll disturb the paint underneath and you'll likely damage the paper from overworking it. If you're impatient like me, you can use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process or um, I also really like to multitask. So you can also, you know, do something else in between um, the layers of paint. Admittedly, during the process of this first, first screen cap, I was super tired and I was actually struggling to stay awake. So I ended up actually taking a quick nap at one point in between one of the layers. If you've been with my channel for a little while, you'll know that I really love doing these movie and TV screen cap studies for a number of reasons. I think it's a great way to practice not only your painting and drawing skills, but you can also learn so much about composition, color and style and so on. In the past, I've done screen cap studies for Disney's Mulan, Klaus, Howl's Moving Castle and more. And again, if you have seen a number of my videos already, you'll know that I am constantly preaching about how animated movies and TV shows have always been hugely influential to me as an artist. This is why up until now, all of my screen cap studies have been from animated content because I'm just so endlessly inspired by it. However, I of course love live action movies and TV shows too. So when I was deciding on one for this video, I knew I wanted to tackle something different, but of course something that I still found really inspiring. 
Eventually, I ended up landing on Batman Returns because not only is Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman just forever iconic, but this might actually be one of my favorite movies of all time. Unsurprisingly, Catwoman is my favorite part of this film, so I knew that I wanted to pick screen caps that involved her character. Environments and backgrounds are definitely something that I want to continue to improve upon, so I knew that one of the two studies I wanted to pick something that would give me that opportunity to practice. A part of me did debate on using one of the shots inside her apartment right before she has her breakdown, because I gotta admit, it is cute AF. If you don't remember or happen to have not seen this film already, which you totally should by the way, it is very pink, super feminine with like a vintage vibe to it. Like the walls are pink. There's like stuffed animals everywhere. The appliances and furniture is like super cutesy. However, once I came upon this shot, I knew I had to paint it. This blue, purple, and pink color palette is probably one of my favorites to work with. Plus, I am totally a sucker for some neon lights, which I figured would be really fun to tackle with watercolors. Also, as a side note, I think it's super fun and clever that the sign originally said hello there, and then when she has her breakdown, she busts the letters so that it reads hell here. Like, what a mood. <laughs> oh, and speaking of moods, one of my favorite parts of this whole sequence is when she first comes into her apartment and says, honey, I'm home. Oh, I forgot. I'm not married. <laughs> I think of this scene so often now that I live alone. <laughs> okay. But back to the process here. So as you can see, I am continuing to add more layers of watercolor to deepen the values and to create more depth and dimension. Something that I wanted to discuss with doing this study was taking artistic liberties. Previously with my other screen cap studies, they were from animated TV shows and movies. So they inherently are already stylized and simplified. And so in some cases when I was working on them, I barely had to change anything or in other cases, I'd be actually adding more detail. But since this time around, I am working from a still from a live action film. I had to do the opposite where I would be removing elements or simplifying it. Since as an artist, I personally am not trying to go for a hyper, hyper realistic art style. So this is actually a great exercise for me to train my creative brain to make adjustments that suit my art style. So when looking at this scene, the focal point is of course, looking into the window to read the hell here neon sign. Then other key elements is the kind of gothic style architecture of the building to, you know, set the mood and it's like a nod to being in Gotham City. And then lastly, the cats outside to signify that the character has turned into Catwoman. In the original shot, there are several more cats that are of different breeds and have different colors and markings, but I really didn't feel it was necessary since I you know, want the focal point to be the window. So I reduced the amount of cats and didn't bother to put much detail into them and just kept them in this kind of cool toned color palette. As well in the original shot, the second window to the left actually is lit much brighter and has actually some warm lights inside and you can kind of see a lot of the furniture. And then to the right side of the building, there's some stream of streams of like white steam or smoke and you know more kind of building architecture i of course really wanted to emphasize the glowing pink window so i felt like introducing the warm lights in the second window would detract from that and so i also felt like you know just omitting any yellow or orange in this color palette made my life easier because then i didn't have to introduce another tube of paint essentially <laughs> but also of course is reinforcing the emphasis on that bright magenta that's in the center of this frame 
And then, of course, the stream of smoke on the right side of the building. As you can see, I did originally keep that in or I kept that in mind. But in the end, I do end up sort of um, flattening it out or reducing the contrast because I didn't want it to distract or compete with the main focal point. So I reduced the kind of visibility of it. Oh, and one more thing with stylizing or simplifying here that I did was with the architecture of the building. Not only is the scene quite dark anyways, so it's hard to see all of the details clearly, but again, I didn't think it was necessary to get it super accurate. From my guess, the pillars, I think, have an owl on top of them. And then in that kind of arch thing, there is some kind of gargoyle crouching inside, I believe. And so with that in mind, I just loosely painted in the shadows to give the impression of these elements as opposed to fussing over making them perfect. And even if it doesn't actually look like those elements to most people, it's not really important because again, that's not really the point of this scene and it's not the focal point here. And maybe some of you might be thinking that, you know, that seems really obvious, but for me, actively putting myself in that mindset really took away any stress that I might have otherwise felt about tackling this scene. Because normally I often feel pretty intimidated by detailed environments, especially when it comes to man-made things like buildings and vehicles. But when I approached this with the headspace that it's more about, you know, setting the mood and giving the impression and less about, you know, perfect accuracy, there was just something really freeing about that. And then, you know, in, in that process, I ended up actually having a lot of fun painting this and really felt very little pressure about it, which was really, really nice. And lastly, how satisfying is it these last touches with the white paint marker for the text and then adding that like last layer of purple and pink on that window? Mm, chef's kiss, so satisfying. <laughs> Now, moving on to the second screen cap study here of a close-up portrait of Catwoman in all of her glory. Unlike the previous study where I was able to get around introducing a yellow tube of paint with this one, I decided it definitely felt necessary to include the yellow paint for painting the skin tone since her face, of course, is the focal point of this shot. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not aiming for my work to be hyper realistic. So when I was approaching this, I wasn't concerned about getting the character to look exactly like Michelle Pfeiffer. The main thing for me was capturing, you know, the mood of the piece. So the main thing was getting her kind of, you know, sultry but mischievous expression as opposed to the likeness to the actress. I had debated between a couple of different screen caps of Catwoman for this, but I decided to go with this one because I am one, a sucker for symmetrical compositions, and second, I thought that the overlap of the graphic would be an interesting challenge that I've never really tackled before. So the approach that I normally take with watercolors that I did with the previous screenshot is that I build up light layers of paint to achieve the values. And of course I do do that with the skin tone on the portrait here. However, with the other elements of this study, since I knew that the majority of the scene is really, really dark, especially that background, it felt much more efficient to just go straight into a much more saturated and bold layers of paint. Something that I did keep similar to the previous screen cap that I did with this one though, is that I actually avoided using any black. Even though you could definitely argue that both scenes contain a lot of black in its color scheme, I decided to use the dark indigo instead, which I think just gives like a slightly different vibe to the pieces. And I really like how it just blends into the other colors. As I mentioned earlier, 
Batman Returns is probably one of my favorite movies, which is why I chose it for these screen cap studies. Not only was this a great opportunity for me to pay homage to a movie and character that I really love, but I also have realized in the past little while that I absolutely love painting like latex and vinyl and leather. There is just something so fun and satisfying about painting around those bright highlights. Also, this particular version of Catwoman is just one of my favorite character designs. The haphazard white stitching and the mismatched claws are just really great details that not only look cool, but are also informed by her character being, you know, unhinged and frankly, a little crazy. <laughs> and I think that is just a nod to great character design when you can look at the character and you already can make you can kind of deduce what kind of person or personality they are based on what they look like. Previously in many of my videos, I have pretty extensively talked about how I grew up watching Disney movies and Studio Ghibli movies and consumed tons of anime and manga in my teenage years, which have all cumulatively informed my artwork. However, another big influence of mine that I haven't really mentioned much is the DC universe and specifically Batman. I admittedly didn't really read much of the comic books, but I loved the 90s animated Batman TV show, as well as Teen Titans, Batman Beyond, and of course the 90s live action Batman films. As a kid, Batman Returns was a little bit too spooky for me. So initially I didn't watch it quite as much cause it kind of scared me. Like I still watched it and was really captivated by it but it was a little scary for me. But, and yeah, of course, um, as I grew older I came to appreciate it more and now it's my favorite. However, when I was a kid, my favorite at the time was Batman Forever, which for those of you who might need reminding is one of the cheesy ones with Robin, the Riddler and Two-Face. Of course, the fact that it's so cheesy, campy and over the top is what made it so appealing to me as a kid. But even as an adult, I still think it's really fun and entertaining and I still enjoy watching it from time to time just for, you know, how ridiculous and fun it is and obviously for the nostalgia factor as well. Because, you know, as much as I appreciated a movie like The Dark Knight, not all movies need to be dark and gritty to be enjoyed. Sometimes they can, you know, be borderline silly and ridiculous. And honestly, it's a great time. Like Jim Carrey as the Riddler is, you know, one of the many peak Jim Carrey-esque characters. And also Chris O'Donnell as Robin in this movie was one of my many childhood crushes. <laughs> I remembered in one of my previous question and answer videos, someone had asked me if I preferred Marvel or DC, and honestly, it was a really tough choice. I'm a very indecisive person in general. That's, you know, the Libra in me. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even remember what my answer was at the time. So what I will say now though, is that of course, growing up, I would have said DC all the way. I really didn't consume much Marvel up until those live action X-Men and Spider-Man movies came out in the early 2000s. So like all of my childhood was all DC, mainly Batman. But obviously in more recent years, the MCU has really dominated the scene and I have enjoyed quite a lot of them. Whereas the more recent DCU content, I haven't really been a huge fan of, but I have been recently slowly watching Young Justice, which is an animated DC TV show. Um, I haven't found it like binge worthy necessarily, but I am really enjoying it. So the short answer is I am very torn. <laughs> The superhero genre has been pretty oversaturated in recent years, but I do appreciate that we are still seeing some variation and interesting takes on it. 
you know, we've got like the fun experimental stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy and WandaVision, but we also have the dark slash gritty stuff like Logan and the boys. I loved Logan, by the way, but oh my god, I don't think I could ever watch it again. It was so sad. <laughs> And fun fact about the TV show, The Boys, it was, I think, all shot in Toronto. I remember watching it. I recognized so many of the locations. I was like, oh, I've been there. I live near there. I've been there. <laughs> so that's also a really fun Easter egg show to watch if you have been to Toronto or you live in Toronto. Okay, so now in the process video here, I am using a white color pencil to highlight her claws. And then of course I use my favorite white paint marker to add in the white stitching on her costume and some bright highlights into her eyes and her lips. And honestly, the highlights are always what really breathes so much life into the piece. And adding that white stitching was so satisfying and really just like brought that character to life. And then came the slightly nerve wracking part of putting the cat graphic element over top the whole thing. I used this roll of masking tape to give me a perfect circle. And then I used this light blue color pencil to sketch out what looks a lot like Felix the cat. And then I busted out my other paint palette that had some old dried up gouache on it and I mixed in some fresh white gouache to make this light blue color. And when I initially started this painting, I had told myself I should take a photo of it before I added in this gouache graphic. But alas, I was starting to rush and I completely forgot. <laughs> so... Yeah, now I'm sure there are going to be some people watching this who will be horrified and think that I totally ruined this painting. But honestly, I feel pretty at peace with it. And surprisingly, while I was painting it, I didn't really feel that bad about it. Like, I feel like normally I would be really stressed about ruining it, you know, spending all that time painting this and then, you know, potentially ruining it with this gouache overlay. But for whatever reason, I was actually really chill with it. And in the end, I'm actually glad that I did it because I think it turned out pretty cool. And of course, I was, you know, aiming to replicate this screenshot. So yeah, I think that it turned out pretty cool. And I think that it's a really fun experiment that I will, you know, keep in mind potentially for future illustrations. And yeah, that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing and hearing the process behind these two paint studies. And I hope that you enjoyed hearing me ramble about Batman. Let me know in the comments if you have a favorite Batman TV show or movie. I'd love to chat with you about that. And yeah, I hope that you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.